We've been working through Romans 8 for the last couple of weeks. Wonderful chapter, full of meaty, wonderful promises and theology, encouraging us that God is with us by his spirit and all the implications of that about now, no condemnation in Christ Jesus because we've been set apart through Jesus' sacrifice, applied by the Spirit to our lives. We're children of God. We call on him, Abba, Father. He's with us. And even when we don't know what to pray, he's praying. He's showing us the, the future glories that are in store. Even though we're going through suffering and the creation goes through suffering, uh, God is working a glorious thing. And then we thought yesterday about the implications of those uh, who love God, God always in everything is working for their good, working for their ultimate good. What's that? To make them all like Jesus. So that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. He might get all the honor, uh, but that's actually also our good and because it's wonderful to be like him, his character, growing like him. His is the pleasing way of life. It's pleasing to God, but it's also uh, what will bring us joy and satisfaction because that's how God made us. And so God is in this business of recreation uh, and conforming us to Jesus' image. But he goes on, and we read it yesterday, into a list of uh, a kind of logical, maybe time-wise, uh, chain of events of things that are connected together that God has done and is doing in the life of every believer and it's a whole lot of those big words that we we come up with theological terms and so we're going to spend <clears throat> the next couple of devotions the next few devotions uh, just looking at detail at what each of the terms means in this chain so i'm going to read the chain of things that god's doing and they're all wonderful and then we'll think through each one separately as we go. And so here we are in Romans chapter 8. Let me pray. Father, thank you for the good things that you are doing, that who have done and are still doing and will do in us. We thank you for the blessing of being part of your people and the knowledge that you are working good in us to make us more like Jesus for our sake, for his sake, for everyone's sake for your glory. And so we pray that you'll continue and complete that work in us and help us as we delve into this deep truths and these uh, big words of scripture that you might help us to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Romans chapter 8, and I might read from verse 28 again, um, but we're really looking at verse 29. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first by my man, many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And so there's uh, uh, six steps in there, I believe. Uh, at least, well, there's, well, let me go through them. Uh, what are the steps? Those God foreknew, he predestined, those he predestined, he called, those he called, he justified, those he justified, he was also glorified. So well, there are five steps, five steps. And we're looking at the first one today, which is those God foreknew. That, that is, those who God saw ahead of time. Foreknowledge is, uh, I guess, uh, what you would say a uh, a a media or not a media a spiritist is doing or something like that making predictions about the future although in god's case it's not predictions and it's not mystical or magical how it works god knows what's coming and he knows the future now how does god know that well because he is the one who decides what happens I mean, I can say I know that I'm going to have a cup of coffee at uh, at 10.30 today and uh, because I'm going to get up and boil the kettle. Now, all sorts of things in my limitations could go wrong. The kettle could break. And so it might be impossible for me to boil the kettle, in which case I'll have an iced coffee <laughs> or something like that. It, it may be that the water supply in Sydney completely dries up. There might be a catastrophe. It may be that I trip over on the way and actually don't make it, but I'm intending to do it, and so I'm pretty sure. But in God's case, it's not pretty sure. It's certain because God sees 
the future. He sees everything because he is determining the future. We'll get more into that when he talks about this word predestination, which we'll, we'll come to tomorrow. But there's a, lots of wonderful things in this foreknowledge, and particularly foreknowledge of his people, which is what he's talking about, of Christians. That is that God knew us. He knew us even before we existed. He knew about us. He, we knew about us before the creation of the world even. Uh, and so actually there's some wonderful things about that, isn't there? Uh, it's wonderful to know that God had you in mind and me in mind even before he made the world. We are not an accident. We are not, um, uh, you know, some afterthought. We're not plan B. We're not any of those things. Actually, God, as he dreamed up what he would do in conversation between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as they planned out the future, they came up with the pattern for each of us, what we would look like, um, what our character would be, what our fears would be even, the, the way we operate and interact, whether it be introverts or extroverts, all those things. Now, a lot of those are also molded by our interactions with people, but God was aware of everything ahead of time. In Psalm 139, which is a wonderful, encouraging psalm, uh, we read about God's creative purposes. He says, You've searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Now, that's you could say, well, that's just God looking down and he's got uh, big eyes, that he's aware of everything. He's uh, He can see everything right now. But as you go on in the psalm, it's more profound than that. He says later in verse uh, verse 14, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know um, I know uh, that full well. In fact, verse 13, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And so here is God at work in the creative purposes, which he's ongoing with. He created in the six, six stages and rested on the seventh uh, but he's still doing his creative work as he produces each human being, as he uh, grows babies in wounds and so on. What does God know about us? Well, he knows all the fine details. Um, Jesus talks about the fact that not all the hairs even on your head are numbered. God knows what how many are up here. I will never know. I mean, maybe if I go bold, I get down to three or four, I could count them, but... You know, I, I have thousands, I don't know, millions of hairs maybe uh, all over me. And But God knows each one in detail. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and so are you because of God's foreknowledge. It was his plan. And so uh, whether there's uh, things about you that you don't like or appreciate in terms of how you look and how you, uh, what you're like, well, there's always things to develop in terms of character if there's sin involved in in how we, whether it's other people's sin in producing how we are or our own sin and so on that have produced bitterness or whatever inside of us. But uh, God knows who we are. We are his creation fit for his purposes. And so this is the first step in this chain of events. Those whom God foreknew he was going to do a mighty work in. He's talking about believers. And so as believers, we can know this thing and thank God for it, that he knew us before the creation of the world. And we can rejoice in his wisdom and rejoice the fact that we are secure, that there's no surprises for God and that we can walk with him forever, knowing that he is with us. And so uh, the, the condemnation he talked about in verse one, that that's, we don't have any condemnation because we've been foreknown by God at to, and he knew we were going to accept Christ. Now we'll come to what does that mean in terms of predestination tomorrow. Uh, but let's just take this for what it is, that it's wonderful that God knows the future and he knows us and he knows us intimately in all the parts and details. Let's thank God for that because it's wonderful, because he's on our side anyway. And isn't that the encouraging thing about Romans chapter 8? In fact, the whole of the scriptures and the gospel, that God loves us 
despite our failings, but he knew us before the creation of the world. Let's thank him. Father, thank you for your amazing mind that came up with uh, a world and people and a universe. And we thank you that you foreknew us who would later receive Christ, that you know every part of us, you know every part of everyone, but thank you that you know every part of us. Thank you that you know all the, the minute details, the number of hairs on our head and that, you know, what we're like. And we thank you. That's all part of your creative purposes. So we pray, please, that you help us to rejoice in what you have made in ourselves and also to be kind and compassionate to others who are also made in your image. Help us to love with the kind of love that you've shown us and help us uh, not to be resentful of your creation, but to rejoice in it. But give us thankful hearts all the time and help us to rest in this knowledge of your uh, that your purposes are always being fulfilled and that we are safe in your hands and that you knew all the circumstances of our lives. Help us to grow when they're difficult. And we pray that in all things, you would work this good and that we might be <clears throat> conformed more and more to the likeness of Jesus Christ. We who've been called according to your purpose. We thank you that your purpose in foreknowing us is wonderful. And so we pray that we'll walk securely and in confidence with you each day. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. <clears throat> God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.